Good evening, Excellency ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Cambodia Global Dialogue of Southeast Asia TV. Um, today, I have the pleasure to have a, a friend of mine who happened to be in town attending a conference, uh, CDI ANZ uh, Economic Outlook Conference. Uh, and he brought with me a uh, latest book that uh, he proudly gave to me. It's uh, called The ASEAN Economic Community, Work in Progress. And he's uh, one editor. Uh, and the other editor is a former uh, ASEAN Secretary General. It's called The yeah, ASEAN Economic Community. And this is the topic that I thought that uh, a lot of people now want to know. What happened in 2015 when Cambodia joined the ASEAN Economic Community? Uh, a lot of uh, misperception, you know, misunderstanding, a lot of fear, a lot of hope. Uh, so I thought that since uh, my friend is in town, uh, I invite him to come to the, the, the studio and have a nice exchange on about the book, of course. And I'm pretty sure that from the book, uh, he can share with us a bit what is his view on the future of Cambodia in the ASEAN economic community. So, Jay. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Savannah. Pleasure yes. to be here. Well, well, well Jay, you, you are uh, with the Asian Development Bank. You're lead economist, specializing in trade and regional cooperation. Interesting. But I will let you, uh, uh, you know, talk straight to the audience a bit about your background. Sure. Uh, thank you, Savannah. And uh, again, thank you for the pleasure of uh, inviting me on to be in your program. Um, very briefly, I guess uh, I'm an economist by training. I started my career actually in academia. Uh, I used to work at Monash University in Melbourne. Yes. Um, uh, and then I decided to uh, do more development and policy related work uh, in Asia. Yes. And joined the ADB um, some 15 years ago. Oh, yes. when you were much younger. When I was much younger, yes, that's right. Yeah, but well, I'm not telling you my age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. You have no gray hair, so it's okay. <laughs> oh, there's technology nowadays to deal with <laughs> that. <laughs> but um, actually, my um, first um, overseas consulting assignment with ADB was to help um, uh, first uh, prepare uh, Cambodia and Laos, PDR, for membership of ASEAN. Yeah. Wow, 15 years ago, meaning about 99? Yes, actually. 98, uh, 99. No, this was when I was still a consultant. Yes, yes. So yes. this was actually 96, 97. Yes, yes. When I first came to... Yeah. Um, because Cambodia joined, we were the last one to join right. in 99. Exactly, yes. Uh, um, did you work with CICP at that time? Uh, yes, work? I All did. Right. I did with uh, Excellency Kakabun yes. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and also the impacts of joining ASEAN. Yes. So uh, it's interesting now, I've come full circle. Those days it was ASEAN and of course uh, after. Yes. And now we are looking, uh, you know, 17 years later or actually 15 years for Cambodia uh, at uh, the ASEAN Economic Community. Yes. Yes, yes. AEC. So, All right. Yeah. Well, y y you know, uh, I, I would say that uh, Cambodia is since 1993, I mean, if we go back a little bit uh, uh, backward to the Paris Peace Accord, we, we came out, you know, from scratch try to rebuild the nation, you know, try to reintegrate into the community of nation, at least to start with the, from the region. And then a big push to join the WTO. Yes. You know, and I think that was a, a, a watershed effort, you know, For to sure. liberalize the economy. Yes. Welcome the investment to efforts, the country. Uh, well, <laughs> thanks to a lot of people uh, in the government, in the private sector, in uh, development partner like sure. yourself sure. helping. and. So I, I can see it's, it's a lot of uh, economic activity yeah. that uh, you probably witnessed that now uh, you visit in Cambodia. Absolutely. But the future, you know, the ASEAN leader is pushing to have this ASEAN economic community, free flow investment, service, free flow of skilled labor, labor yeah. capital. From your perspective, what do you see a small country? like Cambodia, like Laos, you know? Yeah. Because when you're a big country, maybe you behave differently. Sure. But what's the prospect for a small country like Cambodia? Sure. I think, uh, you know, uh, what you said in, earlier on uh, was very interesting of how, uh, following the Paris Peace Accords, uh, how Cambodia has come 
so far and so quickly actually. Yes. In fact, I often uh, want to write an article uh, titled Asia's True Economic Miracle. Uh, you know, they talk about the miracle economies, the newly industrialized yes. economies of uh, Singapore, Taiwan, uh, Korea, South Korea, and uh, so on. But I think Cambodia is the true economic in terms of mm. how far they've come in that period of time. Yes. From almost uh, nothing yeah. to where we are today. Mm. So the percentage change is yes. the largest for sure. Yes. Right? Um, and the absolute changes, of course, might yes. vary okay. but sure. across other countries. Mm. In percentage change terms, I think it's been dramatic. And, uh, but another uh, interesting, I think, uh, an indirect benefit yes. of starting from uh, so little mm. is that um, you also didn't inherit a lot of uh, bad policy yes, yes. or bad uh, institutions. Yes. Right? Uh, I mean, a good example is just to look. Uh, um, yes, I mean, compared to um, uh, Cambodia's uh, immediate neighbors, yeah. uh, like Laos, PDR, and uh, Cambodia, for instance, um, these are countries struggling yeah. even with state owned enterprises, yes, yes. Um, you know, which uh, have developed over many years. Mm. They are entrenched interests. Uh, they yeah. are very difficult um, yeah. to actually uh, dis uh, disentangle. Yeah. Um, and um, they, uh, as I say, interfere in all facets of uh, economic and mm. political activity. Uh, and so Cambodia, luckily, mm. doesn't have that uh, burden yes. inherited from it, uh, from the past. And uh, Cambodia is a very open economy mm. and always uh, has been the most open, actually, amongst all the new members of ASEAN. Um, and so, in some sense, they already had a head start yes. in preparing for the AEC. For the AEC. Right. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, uh, the amount of work needed uh, in terms of policy changes mm is a lot less than many countries mm. uh, in ASEAN but um, most of the work of course involved in uh, is involved in terms of institution building yes. and of course uh, you know when they say preparing for the AEC yes. right i mean i think it's equal to saying you know preparing for becoming a middle income country yeah. right it's the same thing it's yes, the same thing that's yeah? right it's yes. all part of the same be, be, development be, process because Cambodia in a few years time we will graduate from the low Income exactly. country to a, a lower middle, lower income middle country. and country. heading towards upper middle, of yes, course. Yes, yes, Hopefully yeah. by yeah. 2030. Yeah. that's right. That's yeah. the uh, that's the trajectory. If so, so you 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 see some some semblance, uh, some similarity yes. of of that of that trend, of that effort, of that path. Yeah. Right. Yes. Absolutely. That's right. And because uh, because in what way? Um, okay. Um, I think you can see how um, you know um, catch up. Uh, uh, which is what is happening now mm -hmm. in Cambodia and its neighbors, right? Catch up growth um, uh, to the other, say, original ASEAN countries yes. um, involves, you know, uh, much higher rates of economic growth mm -hmm. uh, than the others. And uh, this is almost difficult not to do, mm. right? Mm. Uh, <laughs> yes. Even if you try, it's hard uh, not to do it yes. uh, because, you know, capital uh, labor ratios are still mm. low. Yes, yes. So even a little bit of capital mm. added to labor increases productivity by yes. huge amounts. Wow. Yeah. And and then there's also this sort of late come advantage, as mm. they say. Yeah? Uh, you know, you what do you mean by late uh, okay. come advantage? Uh, let me give you an example. It's like instead of investing huge amounts in... Um, Infrastructure for lined telecommunication, right. wired communication. Yes, yes, yes. Just go cell phones. Yes. Right. How do you skip the learning need, curve? Yes. Who needs? Uh, yes. N not everyone needs a wired yes. uh, connection anymore. Yes. Uh, in fact, they should. If they want wired connection. There should be fiber optic. Yes. yes right. Yes. Forget the old technology. Mm -hmm. Move straight mm -hmm. to the internet mm -hmm. uh, technology, and therefore you don't need to. You, you mm -hmm. save a lot of resources mm -hmm. uh, by coming in mm -hmm. after things have changed mm. uh, uh, in uh, terms of technology leapfrogging. Yes. Uh. You know, uh, when I talk to a lot of people and they're so fixated with the date December 15, right? Uh, I say, look, 
ASEAN Economic Community, as your book rightly said, yeah. it's a work in progress. Right. That's right. Uh, December 2015, you will not see a transformation black to white to green. No, it's not. <laughs> Nothing, yeah. It's a process. It's a progress. Yep. It's a journey. Yep. And I think because if you look, you know, ASEAN economic community work, it's not a monolith. No, that's right. It, it's mainly different things yep. that make up the community. Exactly, that's right. Uh, would, would you agree with that one? I do, I do fully. I think uh, what you said is exactly uh, the way we need to look at uh, the AEC. Let's forget about deadlines. Yes. Right, yeah. I mean, uh, one thing that's clear, and uh, this is not controversial, yeah. because ASEAN's own assessment yeah. uh, shows that they probably won't meet a lot of their own targets. Yes. Right? So it's not uh, anyone else but themselves, right, yeah. based on the scorecard. Um, so uh, so let, that, that doesn't matter. I mean, you don't yeah. need to hit every target yes. Yes. on 31st December 2015, yes. Yes. right? Uh, it's a, a process, it's a work in progress, and it's a milestone, hmm. right? It can create momentum yes. for reform as mm -hmm. we get closer, mm -hmm. but uh, it really has to continue way past that. Yes. Uh, the, the, the Cambodian metaphor will be the train left the station already. Right. Stop here and there, <laughs> but it will get there. It will get there at the destination eventually, but yes. uh, the de we don't know uh, when. And yes. um, the, uh, the important thing is you keep moving yes, yes. in the right direction. I I feel that, you know, uh, working with the uh, ASEAN, uh, you know, process, uh, you know, recently I've been appointed by the, the foreign minister right. that I'm now the Cambodian representative to the high-level task force right. to strengthen ASEAN and related organ. Okay, right. uh, so, so I would say this is a, a, another effort sure. that, as you just said, that the ASEAN themselves recognize that we may not meet all the target, exactly. But that's at right. least there are a conscious initiative yep. to say, okay. That's right. Having said that, what do we have to do exactly. to push more? So that's I think true. from the psychological side, yep. it, it's more meaningful in the yes. sense that, you know, it's like you make mistake or you're too slow. But if you don't recognize, yes. But here we recognize, hey, we're too slow. That's oh right. my God, we, we didn't do right on this one. Correct. Okay. What do we have to do? Absolutely. I think it's a sign of maturity, as yeah. you say. That's yeah. right, that you can recognize that, uh, you know, this is unlikely to be met. Um, and, you know, uh, come uh, 2015, I'm sure there'll be a huge celebration. Yes, yes, uh, yes. And the famous sort of hand-holding and so on. Yes. Uh, but uh, the post-2015 agenda is already being discussed. Yes. But I'd like to make uh, another point related to this. Um, you know, uh, when we say, um, you know, uh, what does it mean to say, have we met uh, the sort of, you know, uh, ambitions of the AEC? Yes. Very often we're talking about the agreements and the accords, right? Yes. That's really only half the story. Of the story, yes. The main, in my view, uh, the main... The other half? Yeah, is when you go home, yeah. after all the signing mm. and the press mm. coverage, mm. go home to your individual uh, parliaments um, and work with your uh, politicians to implement them yes. yeah. uh, and ratify them yes. and often you might require, to, you might have to uh, change domestic laws yes. uh, to implement them efficiently. Yes. yes. And who's checking on this, mm. yes. right? This is where the monitoring suddenly yes. uh, becomes goodwill, yes. Yes. right? Uh, signing agreements, everyone looks yes. at that, yes. everyone's wondering, okay, yeah. how many yeah. have been signed, how many haven't been signed, what's the deadline? The implementation, which is where change yes. happens, and, and is critical. Jay, I, I thought I'd share with you an anecdote because uh, this morning I was co-chairing a, uh, a, a meeting at the Ministry of Post and Telecom right. with uh, the private sector who are working on ICT. Right. Uh, the meeting is all about bringing together the private sector who are in the ICT business, right. uh, adopting you know, uh, commenting on the ICT master plan. Right. And it's interesting that the ICT master plan is driven by what the ASEAN leader in 2011 I has see. adopted the ASEAN ICT master plan. Okay. So, well, you see, like you say, it's, uh, we're, we're three years behind a bit, yep. but now that the country is grappled with it, yes. you have a framework. That's right. So now we say, okay, our ICT master plan have to reflect the vision of the ASEAN. Right. ASEAN want to be a, a, a sort of like a mini hub like the Silicon Valley, right? Right, exactly. Okay, yeah. that's what we have to do yes. at the ASEAN level. Sure. But then if Cambodia 
at the sub ASEAN level would like to be another sub hub. Right. What do we have to do? Exactly. So, so I think implementation matter. Absolutely. Uh, setting the large framework does give a certain sense of direction. Exactly. That's right. It allows, I think, uh, countries like Cambodia to f to buy in very easily yeah. to ongoing sort of uh, frameworks yes. uh, that are being established, and there are benefits from uh, being part yes. of that framework. Yes. Yep. That's right. You know, they flow directly through mm. trade and mm. uh, so on. But I think you also uh, raise another interesting point about the role of the private sector mm. in the AEC, yes, right? Yes. And this is going to be the make or break, mm. uh, you know, uh, of the AEC, yes. right? If because they're the ones who trade. They're the ones who trade. They're the ones that create jobs. Yes. Uh, they're the ones that yes. uh, create uh, opportunities and, uh, you know, create uh, the revenues of governments yes. to provide social services, right? So, uh, and unfortunately, <laughs> the awareness is still low. A lot of work needs to be done. Yes. Yeah. So, so uh, Jay, you know, Give me a gist of what you have found out from this book. Yeah. Okay, great. This uh, is important. <laughs> and, and by the way, this book you can download, you know, and wh what's the website? Yeah. Okay, uh, in fact, uh, you, you can go to um, uh, the ADB website, yes. it'll be there, uh, www.adb.org, or the ARIC website, yes. it says A-R-I-C dot A-D-B dot O-R-G, All right. or just Google ADB AEC and you'll certainly right. find it. Good, so you, you make sure you... you uh, free of charge. Yeah, free, free of charge. charge. All yes, right, that's all right. right. Cool. So, <laughs> yeah. go, go ahead. Okay, so this study actually was um, uh, requested mm. by the ASEAN Secretariat. Okay. Uh, they asked ADB to undertake a study that looks at the barriers mm. and the impediments yes. uh, to realizing the AEC yes. by its deadline. Um, and so, um, ADB... Uh, decided to partner with the Institute of Southeast Asian yes, Studies. in uh, Singapore. That's right. In fact, with the uh, ASEAN Studies Centre, yeah. which is headed by Rod Severino, yes, yes. Uh, former yeah. uh, ASEAN Sec Chair, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. and a uh, very uh, good academic as well now. Um, and uh, Sanchita Das and Omka Shrestha. Mm. Uh, these are the uh, four, four co-editors of the book. Yes, yes. But we had uh, a lot of experts in mm. different fields mm. who were commissioned to write uh, papers on areas like intellectual property yes. protection, competition law, mm. FTAs, uh, services, trade, mm. non-tariff barriers. Um, a whole gamut, including yeah. institutional building mm. and dispute settlement yes. uh, agreements. So uh, there's chapters that deal with all of these issues. Mm. Yeah, but broadly, the overall messages that come out of this uh, book is that, firstly, do, as you said earlier, don't get obsessed with the deadline. Yes. Treat it as a milestone. Yes. Right. Keep the work going yes. on. Uh, secondly, um, uh, find sign all the agreements that make sure they're implemented legitimately. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the last message, I guess, is that um, you know, in the uh, uh, in the as as in the community, when it's realised in whatever form, it needs to really fit in with the broader regional arch architecture, architecture, architecture and global yeah. architecture. Yes, yes. So this is only one piece of the puzzle, mm -hmm. and how that piece, whether it fits mm. neatly or becomes crumbled, mm. is critical going forward mm -hmm. because there's so many things. Going g on. Give me some example in terms of fitting into the global architecture. Okay, yes. right. Uh, let me uh, illustrate with uh, a, an example, as yeah. you say. Um, you know, let's say, you know, ASEAN is looking to set up sort of, you know, sanitary, phytosanitary okay. standards. Okay, SPS. Uh, yeah, SPS standards, for yeah. its food and so on. One has to wonder whether it needs a separate mm. uh, set standards. of standards for oh. ASEAN versus, okay. the, uh, uh, yes. you know, international yeah. rule, yeah. right? So you don't want to do things uh, duplicatively, yes, yes. Uh, and that's something... You, you don't want to give. reinvent the wheel, exactly, like Exactly, that's right. You've got limited resources, okay. everyone okay. is tied up doing so many things. So why have one just for ASEAN? Mm. And then, you know, go back and then say, oh, WTO, we also have to do yes. this again there. Yeah. ធម្មតោមដោយគេមកស៊ីនត្រជាក់ដូផុនរបស់សរុតអាមេរិកឈានមកគេនៅក្នុងឧស្សាហកម្មបរិក្ខាត្រជាក់ជាង 80% ឆ
dispute settlement is another issue. That's yes. right. Yes. Yeah. You know, in fact, uh, ASEAN's uh, dispute settlement, um, uh, you know, isn't uh, uh, attractive when the WTO one exists mm. and is mm. working quite well. Mm. Right. Everyone. Yeah tend to first look to the WTO yes. uh, whenever they want to address these issues. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So that's another area where one has to think about whether mm. we need mm. uh, the same thing at the regional, mm. you know, uh, sub-regional, regional and multilateral levels. Yes. Right? Uh, some things, yes, yes. Uh, but a lot of things, no. Mm. And this is where it's important to uh, think broadly, yes. uh, especially when things are going on at the same time, mm. like the uh, plus six FDA mm. RCEP, yes. uh, Yeah or Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership has the same deadline as mm. the AC, right? Yeah, exactly the oh, same uh-huh. deadline. So, you know, uh, and this is something that involves all the ASEAN countries, yes, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, important large neighbors. Yes. Okay. So, um, and of course, the, the TPP is uh, mm. going on. Yes, yes. Uh, the meeting in Singapore didn't produce mm. any outcome, mm. but there's, every year they say next year. Yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, they, I think they're getting closer. Uh, and for, uh, ASEAN countries are already in it, yes, uh, and a lot of ASEAN mm, six mm, countries. So mm. all these things are going on, mm. and we need to make sure that uh, they yeah. don't contradict each mm, other. Mm. Yeah, and it's not easy yeah. to get convergence, but we have to mm. work at it. But at least there's no divergence. Uh, yes, that's right. There doesn't seem to be divergence. There doesn't seem to be divergence. Yeah. <laughs> so at some point there have to be some compromise, you know. Uh, that's right. And yes. I think at the end of the day, it has to be an ASEAN thing. Right. You know, why do we, we have to have somebody else model, right? Correct. You see, so... W- oh, yes. W- ASEAN is uh, different. The, the, yeah. It's different in good ways. ASEAN made it that far from a political institution That's right. into to be a, a true community now. Absolutely, yes. It must have gone through its own ASEAN way. That's right. Which, which sometimes people criticize, but it works. It works, yes. It and works. Uh, it's the you know, most successful grouping amongst developing countries in the world. Yes. Right? The most resilient... Uh, I like to think of the type of regionalism in ASEAN is uh, first outward looking, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, open regionalism. Yes, open regionalism in the true sense. Yeah. Uh, it's institution light, mm-hmm. right? We don't yes. have a Brussels. Yes, yes. And we can't afford a Brussels. Yes, and we don't want We don't a want a Brussels. Yes, look yes. at what's going on in Europe right yes, now. Yes, yeah, yes. That's right. Uh, and this is mainly because the rich countries in ASEAN are also small. Yes. Uh, you know, Singapore and Brunei. Yes. Uh, we don't have, uh, you know, a France and a Germany to yes, pay for. To pay the bill. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, yeah. But we don't want that, as yes, you say, yes. and we don't want it. Um, and it's also uh, market-driven, yes. right? Yeah. So the regionalism is designed as a means, mm. not mm. an end yes. uh, in yes. itself. And that's how it should be, yes. right? And um, uh, most of ASEAN's trade is still with countries outside yes. uh, its own. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of its foreign investment comes from outside yes. its own. And that's fine, mm. right? And if you recognize that and make sure you don't, uh, you know, create a fortress, mm. then mm. it's a st- real stepping stone mm. uh, towards, uh, you know, uh, multilateralism. And that's right. how it's worked yes. so far. Yeah. So, uh, last word on the work in progress of the AC. <laughs> What's okay. your last word? All right. Uh, I, I, I say last word. I didn't say the message yet. You still have to have a message. Oh, I see. Okay, <laughs> right. Um, I think, um, well, firstly, I'd encourage, um, uh, encourage your audience to uh, try and have a look at it. Yes. Uh, you know, it's free. A whole book is available free of charge yes. um, uh, to be downloaded. Um, I guess, you know, from um, uh, Cambodia's perspective especially, yeah. uh, the AEC is not going to be a huge game changer for okay. anyone. Okay. Right? It's like, you know, uh, the development challenges uh, uh, and overcoming them and moving uh, towards a better uh, standard of living. Uh, But I think, uh, you know, just getting to a higher standard of living in terms of higher average per capita income is not the full story, right? Uh, What does it really mean if it involves a lot of uh, inequality? Mm -hmm. uh, You know, is there still a lot of uh, polarization? That's a hollow victory in sort of moving mm. uh, up the development ladder. Mm. Uh, the AEC hopefully will create a more inclusive yes, type yes. of growth. Yes. Uh, of course, it involves national actions at yes, the end yes. of the day, yeah. right? Uh, governments uh, in all the member countries, mm. uh, including Cambodia, will have to make changes, mm. uh, grasp the opportunities yes. that the AEC presents, mm. right? Uh, but it's a great opportunity uh, to actually mm. do. 
a lot of things in terms of uh, you know uh, a bigger market in this region. Yes. Cambodia trades a lot outside the region, mm -hmm. uh, US, EU, very little within the region, but that's beginning to change, yes. right? Yes. It's Indeed. becoming part of the production network yes. now, and uh, the AEC will be an important uh, you know vehicle to facilitate mm. that. Yes. If Cambodia takes the opportunity, takes advantage of it. Yes. All right. Yeah. Jay, well, thank you, my friend. Thank you for coming on a short notice uh, to share and in fact to launch the book here <laughs> uh, right. in Cambodia. Yes. Um, so mm -hmm. let me just say on behalf of the studio uh, and the Cambodian audience, uh, thank you. Thank uh, you so much. Yes, yes thank you. Great pleasure. Well, y you know, I, as always, I, I find a great pleasure when I could find somebody who I can discuss with on the issue of the ASEAN economic community. Uh, and this last 30 minutes uh, going over this book, it uh, is quite a revelation in the sense that it confirmed my uh, feeling that, you know, let's not all get excited that December 2015, it's going to change everything. It's not, but it's a work in progress. But having said that, you know, uh, we as Cambodians, whether we're in government, we're in the private sector, the academia, uh, the student even, we, we have to make our business to know more about this ASEAN economic community, right? Because at the end of the day, the government will do its job. We will sign agreement, like Jay mentioned. We will go and negotiate. We will have an accord. But ultimately, it becomes a national action. You know, what do we want to get out of it? We are about to transform from a least developed country to a low middle income country. And Jay have put it in a nice way to say that you, your path is toward the ASEAN economic community, it's the same path as you're moving up from the uh, low middle income, lower uh, income country to a low middle income country. So y there are opportunity arising from this uh, regional integration. There are opportunity, you know, for being part of the regional supply chain. There's opportunity, you know, to take advantage of uh, all this uh, larger market size. But I think the gist of it is that we must make our business to know more about it because at the end of the day knowledge is power and that is why I would strongly recommend that you go and download the book right and then hopefully you know some of you will will be able to get some of this idea from the book and to say look I can apply in 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 my life if I'm a trader the chapter on uh, your trader good is very helpful if I'm uh, now working on uh, software development you know, the intellectual property section is very important. If I'm an architect or I'm a dentist, I find that the, the section on uh, mutual recognition arrangement in the service sector is very helpful. I don't know what, but all I'm saying is that knowledge is power. And to have such a concise, you know, book written by authority, like my friend Jay, <laughs> uh, it, it's, uh, it's something that we should cherish. So on that note, uh, I suggest you download it and enjoy the reading. And I'll be more. I'll bring more people who will come over the year, over the months, to speak more about the various aspects of this uh, upcoming game-changing for Cambodia. Uh, maybe not uh, for the region, but for Cambodia. As a small country, you know, very liberal, very open, you know, uh, very active member in the WTO process, we will take advantage of this uh, economic integration. And I think that, uh, if I can make the metaphor, I say that entering the WTO in 2014 four, was the first wave of game-changing dynamics because it opened the country, it liberalized the economy, right? Now, moving to this ASEAN economic community, it will be the second wave, you know, of uh, uh, the game-changing dynamics. I don't know what will be the third wave. But for sure, the second way will bring you know, prosperity, will bring wealth, will bring job, employment, and hopefully more equity uh, for our society. So on that note, good night.